So we are in the new covenant. So in this new covenant, you see God surround himself with rainbow. God surround himself with rainbow. And I want to show you, it's a round rainbow. I want to show you something. Let me share screen. It's not a very perfect picture, but that's the best. I believe you can see it, right? It's uh, like a round rainbow. This one looks more like a flare. You know, look more like a flare. But I believe the rainbow in heaven, round rainbow surround the throne. And the color is more clear, more thick, more vivid. All right. So imagine that with me surround the throne. Can you imagine that God surround the throne with rainbow? To remind him of his love, his covenant with you. You know how much God loves you? The most powerful being, the all-powerful being, all-wise, the great I am, the one that angels will cry day and night, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to God. He surround himself with rainbow. And like I say in that, covenant it talks about your sins and iniquities are forgiven so he surround himself with that to remind that your sins and iniquities are forgiven and blessings for you good things for you good news goodness mercy and grace towards you and good works towards you if you hear last week i explained what's the meaning of glory what's the meaning of light what's the meaning of gospel which last week i teach that is related to the new covenant and moving from glory to glory get ready shout hallelujah shout hallelujah praise the lord you know why i ask you shout because good thing is going to happen to your life and why it's so important also i teach on covenant make sure you are focusing at the correct covenant because if you focus at the wrong covenant there is no blessings the old covenant there's no blessings and the old covenant brings death the bible call it the ministration of death the letters kill the spirit gives life second corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 7 so this is why i'm teaching you to focus at the correct covenant so that your life will experience breakthrough upon breakthrough many people that are struggling or after they become christian their life actually are started to experience struggle and cannot break through because they are focusing at the wrong covenant they may not be very consciously doing that but unconsciously inside them because they don't know the old covenant and new covenant they went to focus on the old covenant is your intention inside because god see intention inside which covenant you are focusing at you may not know you are safe although you are safe but in earth you live a defeated life because you focus on the wrong covenant because god don't supply to that covenant anymore meaning god don't empower don't, don't give power don't don't give resources for that old covenant anymore but if your heart is operating in that old covenant that's why you are getting into trouble you're listening to the wrong preacher who always always condemn always find fault always what's wrong with this what's wrong with that they may not be quoting the ten commandments exactly but their heart is towards that directions whereas the new covenant is different the new covenant is not saying that we'll live a lousy unholy life if you hear from me testimony you know that our people broke through in godliness in many areas of breakthrough years of bondages 10 years of bondages many years more than 10 years of struggle after learning about the holy spirit and how to relate to the holy spirit they broke through 
Not only that, they start to experience signs and wonders, getting people saved, bringing people to church, touching lives. Because they learn to focus on the correct covenant. Or sometimes I just teach them to focus on the Holy Spirit, not focusing on the Ten Commandments or things like the Ten Commandments. The knowledge of good and evil is called the knowledge of good and evil, but focusing on the Holy Spirit, who He is. You see, there is a difference between you focus on these two. One is you must focus on yourself, must do good, not to do evil. You understand? Another one is looking at the Holy Spirit, looking at Jesus, how good they are, and the Bible says they will start to transform you. It's two different things. It may be a thin line to some people, but it's different. The Bible says it's different. So in the Old Testament, they meditate on the law day and night, including the Ten Commandments, which is part of the Old Covenant Agreement. But in the New Testament, they focus, you know what, you should meditate day and night. The Bible shows you, I've been showing verses after verses after verses. The Bible asks you, mind the things of the Spirit. All the verses actually can mean, translate as mind the Holy Spirit, mind the Spirit. Means you meditate on the Holy Spirit that is with you. Behold the glory of God. I explain the behold the glory of God. That glory is referring to the glory of the Holy Spirit. Listen to my messages. We preach in context. I have never heard anyone preach that kind of context before the Holy Spirit taught me. I have never. They always say, Behold the glory of God. That verse means, Behold our Lord Jesus Christ. I prove the context is talking about the Holy Spirit, the glory of the Holy Spirit. I have never heard anyone preach that before. I have not heard even charismatic or those that are not into charismatic, very into Bible based, I have never heard they preach that before. But I'm not saying there is none. But let me show you. I'm not saying there is none, but I have never heard of all my years of Christian, 40 over years of Christian. I have never heard that before. Literally preached out correctly, word by word, explain each other. The glory of the Holy Spirit. So in the New Testament, you must behold the glory of the Holy Spirit. And where is the Holy Spirit? He's in you. And in the Bible reveal. And in and you can see the glory of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ also because they are the same. So you meditate on what? You know, you meditate on like Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, meaning actually the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. You meditate, the Holy Spirit living in me and with me and on me is full of love. It's full of love. Holy Spirit, you are full of love. Holy Spirit, you are full of love. You say, because in the Old Testament, when they meditate on God's Word, you know what they do? They must say and visualize it. Say and visualize it. Complete one is say and imagine it. Right? So in the New Testament, you must do it what? You must visualize who is with you. Holy Spirit is with you. I talk on visualization. I show also how Jesus practiced visualization of the Holy Spirit. How King David practiced visualization of the Holy Spirit, right? From the Bible. So if you want to live like how Jesus lived, you want to have the breakthrough like how Jesus and King David have visualized the Holy Spirit and also say to yourself, sometimes say to yourself, the Holy Spirit. You meditate on God's Word day and night, but it's the New Testament. You meditate on the New Testament day and night. Sometimes you visualize, sometimes you say, the Holy Spirit is with me, the Holy Spirit with me. There are people that have demonic dreams, right? I teach them do that. I say, you visualize the Holy Spirit is with you and say, Holy Spirit is with me, Holy Spirit is with me, Holy Spirit is with me, Holy Spirit is also in my dream, it's also in my dream, it's also in my dream. He's the most powerful person, he's the most powerful person. I taught people to do that, They broke through in dreams. And there are many ways I teach people to break through in dreams, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because the more you fellowship with Him, you are conscious that He is with you. You are conscious that He is with you. You understand? So all these things, all these things build up the revelations. And also speak in tongues. Because speak in tongues is He put His words, He put His words in your tongue. He helped you to meditate. 
God's Word day and night, New Testament meditation in another languages. I teach that also the secret of Isaiah chapter 60. The mystery of Isaiah chapter 60 is in our teaching. It's all this in our teaching. That's why our people are experienced miracle signs and wonder different from others. Different from others. The member are experiencing, not just the leader. The members are experiencing. Amen. So all these things are there already. So I want to come back to rainbow and covenant. So you see verse 3 says, He that said was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. So these are the different color of the Godhead. Let me share with you. These are the different color of the Godhead. Let me share with you jasper. First of all, it's the color. I mean, it's God the Father. God the Father. All right, so some people say jasper. I thought uh, jasper is yellow color, this and that. Yes, they are yellow color, but let Bible explain Bible. In the New Testament, it's not orange color. Let me share with you what is the color of jasper. The Bible will explain itself. Let us go to Revelation 21, verse 11. You see, the Bible show it. Having the glory of God and her light, was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone. You see, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Clear as crystal. Just like white light, white light. Bright light. All right, that's the color of God the Father. He that Set was low upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. A sardine stone. Who sat at the throne? Later on, chapter 5, verse 6, say this, And I beheld and law in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts. And in the midst of the elders stood a land as it had been slain. Jesus Christ. Because sardine stone is red color. Jesus is, especially the word of Jesus, talking about the word of Jesus is his blood. A lamb as it had been slain. His blood. That's why sardine stone, sardine stone is red color or brown color. Red. The blood of Jesus Christ. And let me share with you something. Let me share with you something. Also, the sardine stone is referred to Jesus mainly, but also the Holy Spirit inside. All right, because you read the verse itself, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. What is the seven eyes? Which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. You see? The Holy Spirit and Jesus are together. That's why it's called Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Do you know every time the Bible mentions Jesus Christ, means Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the one that anointed of the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Whenever we read Christ, it also many times means, many times it means, of course, follow context, unless the context say otherwise, all right? Unless the context did explain other. If not, Christ means the anointed one. Anointed with what? Who? The Holy Spirit. I heard a person share before, say that my pastor shared, the Bible actually don't mention about the Holy Spirit from uh, this book, this chapter to this chapter. They miss out the word Christ. You know what's the meaning of the word Christ? The word Christ is there. Christ means the anointed one. Who said the Bible did not mention the Holy Spirit? It's whether my friend is his eyes open. Is the skill being removed or not? You know, because there are people who are not supportive about certain things. So that's why they try to minus away the Holy Spirit. So you understand where I'm coming from? All right, so Jesus, Jesus, having seven horns and seven eyes, having seven eyes, which are the seven spirits, having the Holy Spirit in him. You understand? You understand? So the Holy Spirit was there also. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it's very interesting you read about the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is 
with Jesus in Jesus, yet the Bible says, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Yet the Holy Spirit is on earth. You see, the Holy Spirit is in Jesus. It's the seven spirit. Seven means the word seven means perfect. The perfect, the fullness, the complete Holy Spirit is in Jesus. Also, it's in the earth. You understand? Very interesting. That is the ability of the Holy Spirit. He can be fully in one place. He can be fully in many places at one time. That's the amazing thing about the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I want you to go back to Revelation chapter 4, verse 3. So the Godhead is inside. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Bible, explain to us. All right. If you read chapter 1, chapter 1, you will read about us for John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you, peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. God. Which is and which was and which is to come. God. Then, second person he mentioned, and from the seven spirit which are before the throne. Holy Spirit also. Again, seven spirit. And from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness. Then Jesus Christ. Let me share with you something for those that those people to help people understand. Many times people say that it's always called God the Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Jesus at the center. So Jesus is at the center of everything, the main focus. Yes, I'm saying yes, I'm not saying no also. But sometimes it's not that way. You read it this way God the Father, he mentioned, which is and which was and which is to come, God the Father. Second one they mention is who? The seventh spirit of God. Third one mentioned is who? Jesus. Who is at the center at this arrangement? Holy Spirit. Because now is the era of the Holy Spirit on earth. He became the center focus for us to relate to. When you relate to the Holy Spirit, you are relating to the Trinity. You understand? Based on those people who say it that way, because his name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Jesus, as mentioned, the second one is at the center. So they come up with a revelation that Jesus is at the center. We don't focus on God the Father and Holy Spirit. Those people came up with this. I can easily prove them they are wrong. Chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. You understand? So, there are many more amazing things in the Bible that surprise us. You understand? That surprise us. Let the Bible speak for himself. Amen. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you know why you are starting to have breakthrough, some of you. Or some of you, you know why you are having breakthrough. Because you are following the way that God plays certain things in that certain order. You understand? Hallelujah. Let us go back to chapter 4, verse 5. Chapter 4, verse 3. All right. So, read on. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. All right. So, there was a rainbow around the throne. Oh, this rainbow, it also looked like green color. Emerald is green color. Very interesting. When you look at the rainbow, very interesting. It looked like green color. The main focus, the main color that stands out is the green color. In all these seven colors. All right. By the way, by the way, the rainbow color, seven color, right? What was at the center of the colors? Which color is at the center of the color? Green. It's green color. Amen. Today you learn a lot of things. Let me tell you, all these things build revelation. You know, you must have all this information first, then before you can go into deeper revelation. They are like the ABC for you to learn words, phrases, sentences. You understand? So these are important things. The sister of vision also saw green. Yes, yes, correct. One of my members texted me in the chat. Because sometimes I must chat, Zoom chat a while just in case they were telling me they cannot hear me and all these things. So once a while I chat. So one of them say, oh yes, I saw rainbow yesterday too. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Yesterday, my wife also saw rainbow. 